So one question I get from a lot of investors today is can you still do the burr strategy or the buy, rehab, rent, refinance, repeat in today's environment, right? Obviously rates are really high, so there's a lot more risk than there ever was. So that's what that's the question I wanted to tackle in this video. So with that, let's get at it. What's going on guys? My name is Lior and welcome back to my channel. Now, before I get into the meat and potatoes of this video, two super quick things, guys. Number one, if this is your first time on my channel, first of all, welcome. Second of all, make sure you smash that subscribe button. I'm still putting out tons of new videos every single week talking all about multifamily, you know, everything from construction to raising money to operations and everything in between. So with that, let's get right into the meat and potatoes. And as I said, I wanted to talk about, can you still do the burr strategy today? And you know, with the rates going up, you're basically taking on higher debt on both your acquisition and refinance part of the burr process. So, you know, and even though the acquisition debt is important, right? Um, what's probably more important to think about really is that refinance aspect of it, right? Because that's really the pivot of the burr strategy is being able to refinance, to pull out the capital and return it to investors. Now, the issue is as your debt continues to go up, right? And your interest rates are going up, you're really gonna have to start pulling a massive rent roll to compensate for that higher debt that you're inquiring, right? If the interest rates are higher, that means your mortgage payments are higher. So that means you're really gonna have to put up an even stronger rent roll in order to uh, essentially meet any sort of coverage ratios. Now you couple that with the fact that lenders are already trying to be more conservative in general, right? I mean, every single lender and bank I talk to, they're trying to really lower their LTVs. Some of them really have even lost appetite for cash out refinances. You know, you're essentially just going into a much riskier environment on your refinance. Now, the other aspect that I think is really important to think about is the value aspect, right? Because, you know, part, the big part of refinancing and pulling cash out is having the correct value on the back end. But the issue is in this kind of uncertain time, right, where things are, you know, we're not really sure how things are gonna play out. If you are underwriting, you know, your value to be, let's say a million dollars, once the property is renovated, you know, there's a chance that if things for whatever reason get worse, your value could actually be lower when it appraises in say six or seven months when you're doing the cash out refinance. You actually have to give yourself a little bit of a margin on the value in your back end uh, to make sure that you're not tied down to the value, you know, to today's values, right? Because again, we're in a little bit of a changing environment. There's a lot of uncertainty, fluctuation. And if you're gonna strictly underwrite to today's pricing, that might set you up for, you know, some potential pain in the future. So given all this, what do I think you need to be doing? Well, first of all, I think on the equity side, right? Let's say the part that you're raising the money, you need to make sure that that capital can be more patient than ever, right? And here's what I mean. So a lot of people might raise that, you know, the down payment and all the costs needed to execute the project is either equity or debt. You know, regardless of how you do it, most people, when they're doing a burst strategy, promise to pay it back within a certain amount of time. But what I think you need to do is actually talk with your investors and say, hey, there's a chance that, you know, our interest rate's gonna go up or the value is gonna come a little bit lower and I might not be able to refinance as much or all of the capital as I thought I would. So there might still be some cash left over in the deal. Are you okay with that, right? Those are the kinds of conversations I would be having with your um, private capital investors, right? Because I think there's a very real risk and very real chance that, you know, something goes wrong and, you know, at the end of the day, you just can't uh, cash out as much money as you think today. And the second thing I would think about is make sure you have multiple exits that you're confident in, right? Because with the burst strategy, obviously the main exit that you wanna try and do is the cash out refinance. But if for whatever reason, you know, uh, the lending is even tighter or you just can't pull it off, you know, you wanna make sure you have another exit. And really the only other exit would be to sell. So you wanna make sure you're confident in the product that you're creating, right? So making really sure that, you know, if you if worse comes to worse, you can confidently put that, uh, you know, that home or multifamily, whatever it is that you did on the market and get a pretty solid price where you can walk away with some dollars in your pocket, right? So really think through the downside here. Again, is there opportunity to still do the strategy? Yes, but you just have to make sure you're protecting that downside because there's a lot of risk, a lot of uncertainty, and you just don't wanna get stuck without a shirt, right? So 
Hopefully that makes sense, guys. If you agree or disagree, put your comments in, in below and I will definitely help.